let us pray. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, the Creator and Owner of our life, our all-knowing God and our great Master Teacher of all, Lord, we humbly come before your throne of grace, asking for the forgiveness of our sin, that may we worthy, Lord, to come before you. Lord, this moment of our, we thank you for everything that you have given to us. Thank you for all the blessings, for the good health, and for gathering us today together with the parents and guardians who are with us through online. We thank you that despite of this challenging time, you are still sustaining, helping, and guiding us throughout the way. Lord, we thank you that despite this pandemic, we can still pursue and start another school year. Lord, we thank you for all these parents and guardians who have chosen Adventist education for their children, especially Adventist Integrated Mission School despite this troubling time. Lord, we pray that may you give us knowledge and wisdom as we start our orientation program. Bless the parents and guardians who are joining with us through online. May you enlighten us as we discuss the things that would help for the betterment of your institution. And may everything will be done in accordance with your will. And may it will bring glory and honor to your holy throne. Lord, may you continue to bless every one of us. May you guide and strengthen us as we face another school year of educating young minds. That we could mold them to excel not just in academic aspect, but also to lead them towards you and to prepare them for your heavenly kingdom. May you continue to give us good health and bless each family that we represent. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Please say us in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Welcome our faculty, staff, 
parents and few parents of beings to our orientation program. Thanks be to him for guiding people who share the love in helping the school accomplish the goal for which it was built. Teachers, parents, and stakeholders, continue with your good work in joining children for God's kingdom. May he always help you in providing quality Christian education to our children. Parents, thank you for sending your children to him. Remember, children are God's property both with a price. Psalms 127, 3 and 4 says that they are heritage from the Lord. It is the greatest responsibility of every parent to teach and train their children in fear and love of God. Has entrusted to man, he needs to be given attention and care. Luther Borbach, a well-known botanist, once said, If we pay attention to our flowers, then we do to our children. We will join believing in a jungle. So let us take precious time with our children to direct them to the journey heavenward. Faculty and staff, thank you for initiating this orientation program so that the parents and pupils will be aware of the school's vision, mission, guidance, and protocols of our school. God bless. Beyond what 
Good day, parents. On behalf of uh, the pastoral staff and uh, also the whole church of Haro Seventh Adventist Church, I would like to congratulate all of you for choosing Ames to be part of another year of your experience, especially with your kids, as uh, we start this another school year. I was tasked today to give a very short devotional message in order for us to be inspired on how we can face this crisis, the ongoing crisis because of this ongoing pandemic. And uh, I would like to invite you first, before we study the Word of God, to bow your heads as I pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we study your Word, believing that your Word is our guide, especially as we start this another school year, 2021-2022. I'm pleading for the blessing for the parents and also the children or the students or pupils of Adventist Integrated Mission School and all schools, either private or public, as we start another school year together as one. Oh Lord, I pray that you will Inspire us through the Holy Spirit as we study your word in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Our short study today is about uh, a miracle that uh, happened or was recorded in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. And uh, for those who are familiar with this story, it's about a Shonamite boy. Who experienced death yet was resurrected by the prophet Elisha. He wrote this, uh, I would like to share for the benefit of those who are not able to encounter the story that there is a short background about it. The mother of this boy or the Shunammite woman, of course, um, they were barren with uh, her husband for quite a time and uh, because of their act of kindness to the prophet Elisha by uh, um, building a small room for Elisha and for Gehazi, the uh, right hand of Elisha. Because of that act of kindness that uh, the Shunammite woman showed to Elisha and Gehazi. Elisha one day asked Gehazi if how they can repay the kindness of the Shunammite woman and her husband. To make the long story short, the, the prophet asked the mother or this uh, Shunammite woman, I should say, and asked her if what is the wish of her heart. And uh, well, the uh, the record shows in Second uh, Kings chapter four that the mother or the woman replied, well, "I don't need anything because I live in abundance." But uh, later on, Gehazi told Elisha that this woman doesn't have a child. In other words, 
she is barren. And uh, therefore, Elisha told the woman that next year you will have a child. And indeed, after nine months, after that encounter, the woman or the Shunammite woman became pregnant and then later on, after nine months, delivered a child. And the record uh, is telling us that it was a boy. And uh, on verse 19, one day when this boy reached a certain age, of course, as a teenager, here in verse 19 of 2 Kings chapter 4, it was, it was mentioned, and he said unto his father, meaning the boy said to his father, my head, my head, and he said to a lad, carry him to his mother. Some Bible scholars are telling us that if this, this uh, problem occurred in our modern times, it must be uh, a brain problem or a, an eruption on uh, one of uh, the nerves going to the brain. And uh, some, or in our modern times, it's called aneurysm. But here, there's no um, clear term used for that. But it was mentioned that this boy suffered headache, a very terrible headache. And uh, he fast forward, let's fast forward it. The boy died because of this problem. And uh, the woman, meaning the mother, rushed to Elisha. And uh, of course, he has the faith in the God of Elisha that even though his son experienced death, but she believes that Elisha, Elisha can resurrect her son through the God of the Israelites. Now, on verse uh, 33, and uh, this is uh, now the center of our uh, study from verse 33, mentioned here, he went in therefore, Elisha went in to the room that was built by the Shunammite woman for them when they are uh, traveling, going to their mission field, passing uh, Shunem. And uh, the woman actually laid down her child or her son to that room in, in, the, in the bed of Elisha. And therefore, in verse 33, it was mentioned here that Elisha went inside the, that room, shut the door upon them and prayed unto the Lord. Their parents, as we face another school year, wouldn't know what lies ahead. But if we want to experience miracles, first step that we need to do, like Elisha did, as recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4, he closed the door and prayed to God. Instead of telling our sorrows, our problems, our um, anxieties to our neighbor, let us first talk to our God. So first step, if we want to experience miracles in our lives, of course one of those miracles that we are asking is this COVID-19 will end as soon as possible because it as you observed last year and even until now, it changes the landscape of all our dealings, of all our lifestyles. And if we want to experience miracles, we are pleading that this COVID-19 will end so that our children will experience face-to-face -face study together with their uh, uh, their teachers and also they can have good social life with their fellow pupils. Nevertheless, miracles will not happen if 
we will let close our doors and pray. So, first step, Elisha closed the door and pray to his God. Verse 34, And he went up and lay upon the child. I love this line. Elisha went up and lay upon the child. I mean, there, there is oneness. There is this connection uh, that uh, Elisha wanted to, um, for us to know in our modern times that if we want miracles, there must be closeness. There must be connection. And here, in verse 34, And Elisha put his mouth upon his mouth. If we want to experience miracles for our children, here in a uh, modern context, mouth to mouth means we need to communicate. After we pray to our God, we need to communicate to our loved ones, or perhaps we consider them that the problem uh, that we are experiencing, they are the cause. And uh, even our pupils, our students, I mean our uh, children, if we want to have a harmonious relationship with them, we need to have this mouth-to-mouth connection. Meaning, we should talk to them and let us also allow them to talk to us. Because communication must be a dual or two-way experience. We must talk to them, advise them, but let us also listen to what they can say about a certain situation or a certain problem. Another thing here is, so pray, have good communication, and here, Elisha placed his eyes upon his eyes, the boy's eyes, meaning eyes to eyes. What does it mean in our modern days? It means we need to monitor um, either our pupils, they are doing their modular activities daily. We should also monitor. We should uh, not only talk to them and listen to them, but we should also monitor on their progress of their daily tasks their daily assignments and even we can also monitor on what the teachers of aims are doing for our children we should talk listen and also monitor here another thing that i would like to share for a short moment with you is and elisha placed his hands upon his hands hands you know when you behold a certain poster and uh, there is a clasping of hands, meaning there is a shaking of hands, it means a support, a, um, a manifestation that you are supporting a certain cause or a certain project. You are, that's why we are telling others that we need to move or to, to work hand in hand. Here, Elisha is telling us that if we want to experience miracle, we should also fully support our children. We should not neglect them. We should not uh, let them do all their tasks without supporting their needs. Sometimes our pupils are uh, trouble because perhaps they're thinking if the parents have already paid their account at Ames. You know, for those parents who are um, having a hard time with uh, their finances, you try this uh, principle also. You pray to God. Have a proper communication with your uh, loved ones. And you should also have the proper monitoring on how you budget your um, your monthly budget, of course, you, how you spend and how you earn, so that we will not also neglect our financial obligation to school. 
Because when our pupils will know that uh, they need to have the promissory note because we were not able to pay their um, specific um, financial obligation for that month, it might affect their study also. So I, I would suggest their parents, please show a full support to your children and also to our school because our school survives because of our financial support also. So let us neglect this aspect. I mean, let us not neglect this aspect. Another uh, thing here that Elisha did was and he stretched himself upon the child and the fresh of or the flesh of the child went warm or waxed warm in the King James Version. So here, stretch. What does it mean when we stretch or we stretch? It means even in our communication, we should stretch our patience, even monitoring, even supporting our, our children. We should stretch our patience. We should always be parents who are willing to do the extra mile or to go the extra mile. You know, to end our short devotional this morning, I am praying for all of you and I am pleading if you want this school year to be filled with miracles first you should close your doors and pray to our God place your mouth to your children's mouth meaning we should communicate clearly to our children even to our loved ones inside our homes we should talk to them and listen carefully because communication is always a two-way you should talk and also learn to listen another is we should monitor eyes to eyes we should monitor the progress the study of our children and also we should also monitor how how we are spending our resources so that we can uh, also support properly our school by paying our monthly obligations that will not affect also the study of our children or our pupils and we should stretch meaning all of the steps if at one cycle wala, wala pa nagabot a miracle or we don't experience the miracle we should do it over and over again we should not be um, getting tired of following those steps because i believe at the end the lord will show miracle to your life and to the lives of those people around you. So, on behalf of the Seventh-day Adventist Church here at Fajardo, I am again telling you that you have made a right decision for choosing Ames to be part of the life, the experience of your pupils or your children as we start this 2021 or school year 2021 2022 may the lord bless you and to end our study i'm asking you to bow your heads as i pray let us pray father thank you that uh, you can be trusted as our god who can show us miracles you've raised the dead heal the sick and there's nothing impossible with you oh lord i pray a special way for the parents the teachers the faculty and staff of aims
bless them bountifully as we start this another school year, school year 2021-2022. Oh Lord, we don't know what lies ahead, but we believe that you are already there because you are an omniscient God, omniscient God, and you are also an, our God who is powerful. You know how to solve our problems. Therefore, O oh Lord, I pray, please bless the parents and help them to trust fully in you and not in human help alone. O oh Lord, thank you for the assurance that you will hear this prayer. For all this, I ask in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good day everyone. Today we are going to talk about coping with stress and caring about our mental health during COVID-19 pandemic. You know, we as parents better than anyone else in the world know how our child's life has been impacted by the pandemic. Although kids are remarkably resilient, many are still struggling to adjust to the changes. And I think this is just natural because uh, the routines that once gave them a sense of control have been erased. Their classrooms have become computer screens, their friendships put on pause. It's understandable they might uh, feel irritable, frustrated, or sad, and sometimes loneliness, confusion, and anxiety are also common but as parents how do we know if our child's emotion are just normal uh, reaction to an abnormal situation or if what we are seeing are signs of more significant mental health challenges so i will be sharing a video just short videos about uh, how to cope with stress and how to care about our mental health. Children may also experience stress in crisis situations. It is important to know how they may react and how to help them. So the video that I'll be showing presents tips that can help you care for their psychological and physical well-being during the pandemic. In crisis situations, children can perceive anxiety which can cause them to feel stressed. Depending on their age, the responses may vary. Some may become overly attached, while others may withdraw. Some may become anxious, angry, or agitated, and others may even start wetting the bed. Here are five tips to help manage stress in children. First, play. Encourage children to play and suggest activities to help them relax. Second, bond. Try to keep children close to their parents, caregivers, or family members. 
If separation is necessary due to hospitalization, quarantine, or isolation, try to ensure regular contact via telephone or any other available means. Third, routine. Establish a daily routine or schedule and stick to it as much as possible, especially in the house. Create a routine in which they can participate in household activities, but also provide enough time to play and rest. Fourth, talk to them. Explain what's happening and provide clear information on how to reduce the risk of being infected by the disease. Fifth, be clear. Use words and phrases that are easily understood and age-appropriate. Come and explain what could happen if your child or a family member begins feeling unwell. Let them know how they may require medical attention or even hospitalization to make sure they recover. Remember, listen to their concerns, show them your support, and be there to reassure them. Bear in mind, this is also a difficult time for them and that they all need the extra love and attention. Stay safe, stay strong, and stay healthy. It will be a very exciting new school year for all of us. Different, but exciting. So thank you for your hard work. Parents, thank you for being our partners in, in education as we work together towards student success for every child every day. So start strong. Let us start strong and let us finish stronger. So God bless everyone and we hope that we will be enjoying this new school year. Thank you. Our kindergarten teacher is a registered nutritionist dietitian. After her first degree of education, she further studied and finished her master's in public health and teaching education at the Adventist University of the Philippines, cum laude. Her work experience says she was a college instructor of the nutrition department from 2001 to 2006 at AUP Silangkabite. She also worked as a substitute kinder two teacher assistant in 2006 at Trinity International School, Bangkok, Thailand. From 2008 to 2011, she was a kinder one to kinder three teacher, office administrator, summer program manager, a child center in charge, also a general assistant to the bilingual program coordinator at Charinpong Kindergarten, Bangkok, Thailand. She was a kindergarten teacher from 2014 up to present at the Adventist Integrated Mission School, Incorporated. Teacher Jennifer Daguon Angulo. Our grade one teacher is a licensed professional teacher. She finished her degree of a Bachelor of Elementary Education at Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, Lemery Campus, Cum Laude. She's been working at the Adventist Integrated Mission School Incorporated since 2018 up to the present. Teacher Montita Antito Pongsanit. Next is a multi-grade teacher for the school year. She will be handling grade 2 and grade 4. She is also a licensed professional teacher. She finished her associate degree in computer technology at Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, Conception Campus. She took up her second course of a Bachelor of Elementary Education at Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College, Instancia Campus. She's been a teacher at the Adventist Integrated Mission School since 2018 up to the present. Teacher Joy Araneta Delphine. Our grade 3 advisor is also a licensed professional teacher. She finished her degree of a Bachelor of Elementary Education year 2014 at Capi State University Pilar Campus, cum laude. Her work experience, she worked at Wake Bridge Adventist Academy, Balasan, Iloilo, and she's been working at the Adventist Integrated Mission School since 2015 up to the present. Teacher April Crystal Garcia Cordero. Grade 6 advisor is also a graduate of a Bachelor of Elementary Education at Central Philippine Adventist College. She is also a licensed professional teacher. She has been working at the Adventist Integrated Mission School since 2016 up to the present. Teacher Merlin Dupo Salarico. 
Gracie's advisor is also a licensed professional teacher and our present school head. She graduated at a Mountain View College year 1994 with a degree of a Bachelor of Elementary Education in Valencia, Bukidnon. She had finished her Master's of Arts in Education at the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies in Silang, Cavite. Now she's been working on her Master's of Arts in Psychology at Lyceum of the Philippines University in Batangas. Her work experience, she was a kindergarten teacher in Sultan Pudarat back in 1994 to 1996. Also, she worked as an elementary teacher in Northeastern Mindanao Mission year 1996 to 1998. And she's been a school head and an elementary teacher under the West Visayan Conference since 1998 up to the present. Teacher Mary Jane and Lutilia. Last but not the least, our administrative assistant. She is a graduate of a Bachelor of Arts in Literature in Central Philippine University. She has been an admin assistant from 2005 to 2010 and 2015 up to the present at the Adventist Integrated Mission School. Ma'am Rachel Hachinova. For the general requirements, We'll just be giving you the printed copies. Kag ipasa man namang sa chat room. So, no need na lang getting apart. So, just have the reminders. First, the election of Home and School Association officers will be next month. So, lantaw nyo lang yung atong na school calendar for this. And we'll also be giving you um, announcements sa atong na chat room. Our module distribution, ang una na itong nga pag-distribute sa itong module will be on August 23, 2021. That, is, that will be Monday, next week, Monday, yes. And then the start for our formal classes that will be on August 24, 2021, Tuesday. Then I'm reminding um, grade 4 last year, grade 5 last school year, 2020-2021. Uh, uh, you, uh, you need to provide t-shirt size for Pathfinder t-shirt printing. Uh, only for those who need a new one. Pero ang ara na kay no need. So for those who don't have, please provide the t-shirt size para mabaklan kag mapintahan ka mo. You just have to pay sa atong na secretary. The next is the creation of chat of group chats kay by grade level. Uh, we want you to, ang inyong kabataan ang real name lang gilibutang pa hindi kayo magtalang, no? will not be confused sa mga pangalan ng iba-iba. So, but uh, I think, ang iba nag-start na karoon pang-add sa inyong chat room and based na sa sino ang teacher, kag sino ang advisors. So, just try to uh, keep in touch with us. You may directly send your questions or, in, or inquiries to our GC or you may PM the school head so we could answer your questions and address the needs. Once again, thank you for choosing AIMS as a school for children for the realistic development for them to be prepared for the life here on earth as well as in heaven. Proverbs 127 verse 3 says, Children are indeed a heritage from the Lord. Therefore, parents and teachers, we are partners. We need to work hand in hand for these precious jewels, knowing that they need to have the best and the true education. True education means it means more 
than the pursual of a certain course of study. It means more than a, a preparation for the life that now is. It has to do with a whole being and the whole period of existence possible to man. Mabasa nyo na sa Book of Education by Alan G. White. And now, I hope if my mga questions kamo, you yeah, really have to um, use our group chat para inyo mapasa inyo questions. Kagaman mo masabat. And we hope that this truly will be a fruitful one for us to toil back so that our learners be able to uh, learn sang madamo pagyan. They will be able to maximize their potential that they can be prepared for the lives, their lives here on earth. And of course, when Jesus comes, God bless all of us as we face this school year 2021-2022. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Most precious and loving Father, thank you so much for this opportunity where you are with us despite of this pandemic. Thank you so much, dear Father, for all the blessings. In a very special way, Lord, we pray that you will bless the church school, the church, the teachers, the staff, and all the parents who send your children in school. I pray, dear Father, that you will also bless your children, that they may be able, Lord, to come closer to you despite of this pandemic. Thank you, dear Father, for all the blessings. May you keep us safe always. Thank you for hearing and answering all our prayers. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.